Hey, hey, into the hey, my illustrious Paswas Nappas. Today we'll be talking about Africa. Africa, home to all humanity. Home to so much nature, to exquisite nature we ponder and care about. So I wrote you something about Africa. A poem to Africa, mother of all human, land of the lost. Time has passed by, vast the humanity wide. Ocean can run with mighty crash. Lion sits and wait under the blade of the grass. Pouncing with opportunity, run free in the sand. Nature, exquisite, take ribs of most men. Bones collect in the soil, building a line of commitment with time. Africa, so much nature, so much culture. Write something about Africa. Let it inspire you. Run free and wide. Love you guys so much right now. Walk with me. Sometimes my shoes are too heavy for my ankles, beckoning with the ground for an escape, carrying my entire being on their fractured backs, like praying mothers who bend their backs at the sound of their children's empty bellies. Walk with me. Journey with me through the intricacies that lie between my battle scars where once hope tattooed itself against my skin using a razor blade, mocking the very idea of life. I no longer fight using my wrists, but now it is with my voice, my key weapon being a metaphor, walk with me. Visit my home that lies scattered on the floor. Each piece was once a heartbeat now covered in dirt, Embraced by the songs our grandmothers sing at funerals, careful. Follow closely so I don't leave you behind. I stand a broken puzzle seeking to mend broken people, hoping there is significant enough meaning in the ability of my brokenness to be put together. Like the perfect poster girl for broken people, follow me. I have things to say. Understanding that each poem is a podium, I lead this protest with my voice. Yitilaba, this is who we are. So, so proud. Being African is a feeling of two feet beating to a bit with a special ancestral connection. You don't know that you are a god. You are a child of the earth who was birthed from strong kings and queens. Melanin dipped Nubian, your strength is like that of a Kilimanjaro. You've got something Tanzanian. You belong to the misunderstood, the men and the women who stood to dance with their chokwe and their kuba on top of their heads. You carry your sweet potatoes and your yum. You do not do breakfast in bed. Instead, you knead your own bread and you feed it to the entire village from your basket of bread. We are family separated by protocol. Man made borders because you saw the need to civilize us. But we will not fight another man's war. You do not know that when the grasshoppers fight, it is for the beneficiary of the crawl. You should know that the most dangerous guns are not machines or rifles. They're hate, greed, ignorance. These are serious silences. Africa is one big home with different tribes that come together as one 
family. No African is a foreigner in another African country who taught you to hate you. These tribes are all pieces which make up one huge flag. Silence the guns, seize the conflicts and heal the land. So you can sing songs under an acacia tree and lay on sandy beaches where the beautiful sceneries elop to Zanzibar and eat African candy plucking straight from a tree of Amarula. Let the sounds of a marimba cause the women to dance in beautiful dance steps as the men flex their muscles that were built from tealing the land. Drop the AK-47 times and refuse to shoot any human as we will only shoot for stars with love as a religion. We refuse to let the child who was raised by the village become a soldier. Instead, we hold hands in solidarity and stand against wars, civil conflicts, GBV or any forms of genocide. We choose love, hope, dreams, creativity, intermarriages, beautiful traditional ceremonies, our heritage. In Kwame Kuruma's words, Africa is one nation, one continent, and one people. Africa is us, so hold on and silence the guns. My first night in South Africa, after crossing waters where my kin still stand, unable to find eternal rest on ocean beds, I find myself floating in a sea of black faces from every current that licks the coast of this continent. I am lost at sea. I am emerging in every face my eyes behold between blinks. I hear myself in every turn of the tongue regardless of the language that confines it. I have floated so far from the shores of reality when my suitcase, it grazes lightly like a full gazelle against another woman's bag. I return from the paradise my mind has vacationed my sense of space to. I begin to pluck an apology like sweet fruit from beneath my tongue. When this woman, when this white woman, when this white woman in South Africa raises her voice to me like I am a child whose careless hands have come too close to spilling the rainbow stew that sits in this nation's melting pot. This woman says to me, go around, entitlement filling the deep valleys that disbelief has created on her face. And in that moment, I am sure she has packed all the white man's burdens in her suitcases. She speaks and her every word becomes shovel to unearth the ghosts of apartheid and now we are toe to toe in this haunted hallway as she continues, you need to go around. This land is occupied. She says this and she traces her fingers through the air as if the act of drawing borders is her inheritance. It is not lost on me that I am here for the Breaking Down Borders Summit and this relic, she reminds me how many borders exist beyond the maps they've drawn on our lands. How to them, our very beings are borders that are able to be crossed with no consequence. This woman, she is the prodigal daughter of colonization, returned to her father's gluttonous feast on our land. See, I wonder if her ancestors told her to speak down to me like mine told me to stand up to her. This land, she says, is occupied. As if I did not already know this. As if I too do not come from a country where whites have taken and taken to the point that they and even some of we believe it is theirs to hold in their hands, their soft hands that have never worked this land, only overseen our bent or broken bodies. So I open my mouth and decades of displacement fill the hotel lobby. The bellboy's mouth, it fells agape at my audacity, my spirit, it shatters at his silence. This woman, she tells me this land is occupied and my brother's eyes beg me to wear quiet like a coat in this South African winter. I consider his request in my mind, but my body remembers and refuses to go back to a silence. Colonization once forced down my grandmother's throat, the same one that sits too well in too many of my, com my, customer of my customers, Jesus, of my cousin's bellies. But close by, I feel another body in memory. I watch as my sissy transform her mouth from a body part to a swift sword and say so pointedly, shut up. Who are you? Let's go, Mwende. 
This is not worth your time. We walk away giving ourselves back to each other, one tooth at a time in our widening smiles as she whispers that maybe, maybe children should be made to pay the price that their fathers put on our parents' heads, how maybe then they would understand that this land was never theirs to begin with. I, res I smile and respond with a throat full of thanks. I joke how in my mind, I took the woman's bags and threw them across the lobby. How I imagined her clothes becoming a flock of fleeing birds. And as we picture this scene of paradise in our minds, our mouths, they burst open like ripe fruit knocked down in the winds of change because we, we are a lineage of joy and survival. The recognition that they are the same. Our joy is evidence of our being and our being here is resistance and reminder that though the project of colonization is ongoing, it is an ongoing failure. Let our every breath be reminder that we are still here. We are still here. We have always been here and we will always be here. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I'm not doing anything really official, so I would want us to be free. Um, how many of you believe in Africa? If you believe in Africa, let me see with your hand. If you believe in Africa, let me see you give, make some noise and clap for. I mean, it's all about Africa. I mean, some of the videos we watched today, we discovered that a lot of Africans are doing great stuff. And um, I have put together some certain elements for a piece I title The African. As you listen, enjoy. I speak of the one who was formed from a fetish foundation, firmly footed in his full foolishness until he was found and transformed from his former format to being faultless and flawless. I speak of the one who is black on the outside but white on the inside. The one whose blackness is strength, strength that gives insight in sight of obstacles. I speak of the one whose black is beauty, who is loyal and faithful to his every duty, who is flawless in plenty, who is faultless, never guilty. I speak of the one whose splendor is like the sweet wine of the earth. I speak of you, I speak of me, I speak of us, I speak of the African. I speak of the African. My roots are deep in mother nature. My origin is rich with potentials. I am more than a star. I am a legend. I hold the record of the world like the book of Guinness. I am made of black. No needle can pop my happiness. No jazz can make me a low life. I have been destined to live a high life. And from the depths of my soul comes the rhythm and blues of greatness. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the moon. From the day to the night including the noon. From the weekday till the weekend. From the weekday till the weekend. The hills speak of my beauty. Not just because I earned it. But because there's a halo of greatness surrounding me. I have an elastic heart. My determination is tough as titanium. In this circle of life, greatness will always stay with me because all of me speaks of being special. The story of my life is my inspiration. Yes, life may not be easy. Life may not be easy. But I've always got my leg over obstacles. We are Africans. We run hoods, we run cities, we run towns. You run hoods, you run cities, you run towns, which is why the world is always mad over you. You know, sometimes they look at you and say, you are too old to be new, too empty to be full, too rusty to be used, too static to be moved. But that's their view of you. That's their view of us. This is the true African view, who we truly are. You are that you that you need to make you the you that you will become. You are that you that you need to make you the you that you will become. You are Y-O-U, Y-O-U, you young, outstanding, unique. So shine, glow, rule your world. Become 
a message to nations message to nations everywhere you go the world is like a picture we are the frame we have an identity Africa is our name together let us rise into fame because even the weather even the weather cannot determine when we reign 